Now everything you say will be recorded. <laughs> and it will be held against you. Music again should have brought along. Yeah. So. All right, could I just briefly say something? Um, I mean, in terms of prayers, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a Yankee fan, but I don't know if he did give thanks yesterday, but Anthony Volpe, who in 2009 was, <laughs> he was in the crowd when they won, and how great for him 15 years later he hits a grand slam in, in, in the World Series. So I want to thank God for him, for him being able to do that, because that's if he doesn't do it, I don't know his background, his religious background, but wow, I'm I'm just grateful to God that he was able to. That's got to be one of the greatest feelings to be able to do that as a kid mm -hmm. and to be able to play 15 years later for the team and contribute like he did. That that yeah. so I, I praise God, thank God for that. That is great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in Isaiah chapter nine, and um, this is a, another one of those seminal passages. Uh, Christ uh, predict, predicting Jesus, um, and this is, of course, a. Uh, Following up on last week, which was a lot of judgment, a lot of darkness, really, it's actually setting us up well for the light that comes in chapter nine. So remember that um, uh, the the chapters that you find in the Bible are, with the exception of the Psalms, the chapters in the Bible are pretty much arbitrary, right? And most most people would have heard these longer readings. They would have been, they would have heard a whole scroll read to them, you know. So sometimes when we read portions of Isaiah or portions of the Old Testament, they can seem rather dark and gloom. But if we just read further, uh, of course, we get the light. And here we have it in chapter nine. Um, uh, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. Of course, this is in Handel's Messiah. Mm -hmm. And um, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. I think about John chapter one, where we know who the light is. The light is the eternal word, the word made flesh. Uh, Jesus of Nazareth, right? The Christ, the eternal son of God who became human. Mm -hmm. And it goes on to, to talk about the, the joy and rejoicing and the gladness. Um, and breaking the, you know, uh, the, the rod of the oppressor. Um, um, that using the the enemy's um, boots and clothing to to stoke a fire. And then after that kind of militaristic language, of course, and Handel's Messiah, they skip over that, which I think is good, actually, to get to the to this great passage. For us, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore the zeal of the lord of hosts will do this another you know very familiar passage and uh the and of course in our readings year to year uh around christmas uh and again, there was no punctuation, so wonderful, mm -hmm. counselor, 
actually ha handel when he wrote the music pauses after wonderful and that's actually correct you should because that's one of his names but just wonderful right mm -hmm. and then counselor and he is a wonderful counselor but it stands alone right wonderful is not my name wonderful uh what is what god says about himself um Pastor? yeah I, I noticed at least in my version there's no comma between wonderful and counselor yeah that's what i'm saying Oh, okay. That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is that yeah. um, okay. a lot of Bibles do have a do not have a comma. I'm saying there was no punctuation in the Hebrew Bible, so there's no commas right in Hebrew, uh, uh, at least in the way it was written. <laughs> um, I don't know about modern Hebrew, but in the Bible, it was there's no commas. But my my point was is that. I love the name wonderful for God because God calls himself that, right? Like when, when Moses says, who should I say sent me, you know, or what's your name? And, and it is not my name wonderful. Or is that, maybe that's when Jacob, yeah, when he's wrestling Jacob, yeah, in Genesis, that, that they have that conversation. So this is a, a name that stands alone. Actually, if you look at the entire group, of mm -hmm. wonderful stands alone. Yeah. Counselor stands alone. Yes. He's mighty because yeah. all my is yeah. for him. Yeah. God, everlasting. Yeah. Yeah. Father. Mm -hmm. And of course, Prince of Peace yeah. is sort of pushed together. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. And notice it's triune too, because mm -hmm. who's the counselor? Who's the uh, paraclete, right? Mm -hmm. The New Testament, the Holy Spirit, right? Yep. And we have Father, we have we have the Holy Spirit, and then we have the Prince of Peace, which is right the Son, mm -hmm. of the King, right? So you have Father, Son, Holy Spirit, which is beautiful. Yes. Um, in my Bible study on Sundays, we we talked for a whole hour about wonder and how important it is. And so I, I think that this is not a God that we can make into an image or to define him in a, with a definition. Mm -hmm. um, he is, his thoughts are not our thoughts. <laughs> his ways are not our ways. And, and we, um, we can know him, but we cannot intellectually grasp him right yeah we can't contain him yes which is what i think a lot of people try to do mm -hmm. yeah they want to put god sort of yeah. in this box yeah. and this is what he does and yeah. over here is what we do yeah and of course there are more things than we do than what <laughs> we perceive him doing you see yeah Speaking of Amy Rogner, after I said that in one of my sermons, you can't put God in a box. She says, there's a song for that. And she sang me yes. the song, you can't put God in a box. Yes. You know that one? Yes. Yeah. You can't put Jesus love in a box. There you go. In a box. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, anything else about that, that first part of, as I, I Isaiah chapter nine, I almost said it like a Brit. <laughs> Isaiah, Isaiah. <laughs> yes, Pastor. Well, it's another subtle, not maybe it's subtle reference to Jesus here. That when you think of this being preached in the temples, that you know, along with obviously the big one is Isaiah fifty three. Yeah, it's just pointing toward Jesus. This is maybe a little more subtle, but fifty three is just really, you know. That, that yeah, yeah, mentioned. yeah. But this is just, you know, another pointing towards Jesus as being the Messiah, that he was here, he is here. And mm -hmm. that's interesting that that, again, I'm always having trouble with anything like that being preached, understanding, not trouble, in the temples. And I'm not making the connection, I literally connect the dots between that, you know, if I'm, yeah. if yeah. I'm downgraded or, you know, simplified that level. And and this is clearly messianic, right? Because of the throne of David. Yeah. yeah. And um and it goes back to the promise of Abraham 
and the promise to David. Remember there, the, he said, upon your throne, I'll establish my reign forever. Yeah. And so, and of course that reign has, had been broken, right? Even by the time of Solomon uh, and his sons uh, that had been broken, but we, we as God's people um, had been hoping for that uh, reinstatement of the kingdom. And we have that in Jesus, even though it did not appear to be the case, right? When he, especially when he was on the cross and mocked, you know, for being king. Um, but we, we believe that, like Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world, right? And uh, it doesn't mean it doesn't penetrate this world. It does. And it, and it, it does so most vividly through the church. And so we are an extension. We are the extension of God's kingdom, his reign. Yeah, Jesus said that. He said that if my kingdom was of this world, my subjects would be fighting for me. Mm -hmm. Even though Peter did a little bit of fighting there, he, you know, cut the high priest off, <laughs> ear off, he tried a little bit, but, you know, yeah. it's not. But this soul has to be, it has to be what it had to be in that situation. He had to be sacrificed so we could be saved. And it was torture, death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. We can live the life. And that's, so that's what had to be, so... And and notice that it was done. This is all done through nonviolence, right? Yeah. yeah. And and so, uh, um, very much unlike our world, right? And um, or even the threat of violence. You know, this is this is done by um, establishing and upholding justice and righteousness, and. Um, and that's that's why we pray for our leaders, right? So that they would, and those who aspire to be our leaders, that they would uh, manifest this. Because I, I, you know, I think, on the one hand, we know that we will always have trouble in this world, but on the other hand, uh, we are to pray for our enemies. We are to pray for civil authorities. And Paul's very clear about that. Pray for the emperor, he says. And at the time, it was probably Nero, who yeah. was a, one of the biggest tyrants of human history. And so uh, we pray, uh, and that's our civil duty, right? <laughs> so we, in our, in our, in our case, we vote and pray. <laughs> so, I think our vote is a kind of it should be kind of a prayer, and should be kind of a way of serving our neighbor, you know. Just as, you know, the Messiah is to be serving everyone, you know, not just his own interests. Um, it, it goes, it continues on. Um, and then that now we have some more words of prophetic law, right? And, uh, so you kind of go, we're going, we, it kind of goes, Isaiah goes back and forth. There's, there's judgment and then there's promise. There's judgment and then there's promise. You see this pattern. Um, um, we yes, Lutherans, sir. we call yes, it I'm... law and gospel. <laughs> and, and so at the end of each thing, you yeah. know, that the, the bricks are going to be falling down and we'll, be, yeah. you know, all this stuff. Then it says, yet for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. That's what I have at, at the end of each one. Yeah. Yet yeah. for all this, his anger, like each, yeah. the Lord will cut off the the Israel head and tail. Yet for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. Um, and that goes on for a while, uh -huh. talking about God's anger, yet his hand is still upraised. Right. Yeah. And it's going through all the different groups of people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the way and through. I'm wondering, what, is, what does that mean, though? Um, I I mean I I think it would be open for interpretation, but I'm going to challenge us to 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 uh, use the lens of Christ as we look at this. You know, we just had this wonderful promise of the Messiah <clears throat> at the beginning of Isaiah nine. So I think, um, uh, the way I would interpret it is that God is still going to hold people accountable. 
right? Um, and uh, people will still be held to an account. Um, and so this is a lament, right? Woe uh, to those who decree iniquitous decrees at the beginning of chapter 10. And so God is lamenting, right, the actions of people. And so um, he's calling out their injustice. He's calling out their sin. Um, in this case, it's following this promise of Messiah. So Messiah has not yet come, right? And so, but but in the meantime, worldly leaders stand in the, some of them, if not all of them, in one way or another, stand in the way of this messianic peace and this messianic righteousness. And so, um, does that make sense? Yeah. Mary Jean, my uh, translation, instead of saying his hand is still raised, yeah. which sort of gives the impression of a smack mm -hmm. or, you know, yeah. being put down. Mine says his hand is still stretched out. Mm. Oh, I like that better. And uh, his hand is stretched out still. Mm -hmm. In yeah. other words, yeah. he yeah. reaches to the human being through his great goodness, mm -hmm. even though they are behaving like uncontrolled four-year-olds in a temper tantrum. <laughs> and my translation says, and his hand is stretched out still. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, mine didn't say that, so I like yours better. No matter okay. how bad you are, I'm still here. Yeah. 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 That's how I read it. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. That's, Thank that's you. Great. And that to me has such a, a better, you know, that's how you reach out to a child who's having a problem or right. or to another. Yeah. A, you know, we we hold each other's hands. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Is that the NRSV that you all have? Mine is, yeah, the new, revi new revised standard version. Yeah, that's my that's my preferred. What is RSV? That's the revised standard version. That, mm -hmm. The RSV. That's what I grew up with, I'm the sure. revised standard. So, yeah, the NRSV is what we use on Sunday mornings, and that's why I like to use it. Uh, they just updated it two years ago. And... Uh, now I'm going to start, I'm going to exchange it for this one because this is the ESV. Oh, and I'm, and I have the new international version. Okay. Yeah. That's where, that's what I have. Yeah. I, on I just my got Bible, the new NRSV. On my Bible, Sorry. On my Bible, I have all four, the King James, the New International, the Living Bible, and the Revised Standard. Mm -hmm. And it's all on one page. So you can see what one's saying. Oh, cool. Saying. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I think when when I when I see and this is a generalization, so forgive me for this if it's too general, but when I see God's anger or I see His judgment in the Old Testament, I I always remind myself that that was a very particular historic uh, context, right? When that was being said and um, that God's really calling people to repentance so that he uh, can extend his mercy, you know? So that's that's one thing. And then the other thing is what I said earlier is that, well, that should be the first, is that we understand this through the cross, right? We understand this through Jesus. And... Um, right. Uh, Pastor, could I tie in maybe a little bit of revelation here? Because it seems like this happens in Revelation where people still got chastised and they still did not turn to him in Revelation where they didn't repent of their sins and turn sure. to God. Sure, yeah. You know, yeah. That, that's what I'm kind of like seeing maybe indirectly here. Uh-huh. That, that people did not turn to him who struck them, but inquired the Lord of hosts. Yeah. So, you know, God continues to rent all these plagues and sort of continue to rain down in revelation yeah and people still say oh no we're not going to repent we don't we don't believe which is kind of hard to believe after a while but that's 
that's what happens. Um, that's what I'm seeing, kind of like an indirect correlation or almost a connect the dot situation here, where that's meant yeah. it's tied into Revelation. Yeah, I'm inclined to to quickly go through ten, if that's okay with you, and um, because it's a lot, it's a lot more of the same, and um. You know, it's interesting, you know, um, just just if you take a step back, um, what part of this did the New Testament quote? Well, the ones that are in Handel's Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. So if the New Testament pulls out these verses as being uh, comforting passages of Scripture, I think it's okay for us to do the same. And we don't have to, you know, elevate all scripture, you know, to be the same because it's not, right? There's 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 promise that we I think we should really highlight and uh cherish. Well, I have heard our friend um oh lord. <laughs> Oh, our Jewish friend. Eileen? Eileen. Yeah. Speak to the fact that when she was taking her Hebrew lessons and whatever, mm -hmm. that Isaiah was one of the books of the Bible that was sort of passed over. Yeah. Because it did not speak the way the other prophets did. Mm -hmm. And that, um, so in some regards, this is an Old Testament book, yeah. but not an Old Testament book that Judaism mm -hmm. embraced the way, for instance, we have embraced the yeah. book, the New yeah. right. uh, Testament. I mean, I've, I've heard scholars call Isaiah the fifth gospel. <laughs> mm. Uh huh. Because it's so clear. You know, you have the life, death, and resurrection of, of Jesus. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it's interesting that this business of his hand being stretched out reminds me of Mr. Rogers, who used to tell children when there was some sort of cataclysmic thing that had happened a hurricane or mm -hmm. an earthquake or something that they were trying to understand. And he used to tell the children, look for the helpers. Yeah. So in other words, look for the good that's being done mm -hmm. in the midst of all of this. Yes. The yeah. idea that God has his hand stretched out mm -hmm of all of these catastrophic things that happened to Israel yeah. through the years is just mind boggling. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It can be understood the way children could understand Mr. Rogers. Yeah. If we would just listen. Mm -hmm. yeah, Roman can we go to chapter 11? We're not talking about taxes now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, chapter 11, um, you had, again, this messianic, we're back now, oh. gone through the law, and now we're going back to promise again and yeah. talking about the, the shoot of Jesse, right? The stump of Jesse. And we'll bear fruit. And if you think about it, the imagery is of a tree that has been cut down right? But then you have what I think they're called stickers too, where you have this uh, new growth coming out of a, a stump, right? And so what we talked about earlier is that there, there was an end to the Davidic line eventually, completely. Okay. And then there was this silence for hundreds of years, and now you have the birth of the Messiah, right? Uh, and he's that unexpected uh resilient 
um, pre preserve, preserved uh, line of, of David. Um, his delight will be in the fear of the Lord. Reverence, think reverence. <laughs> um, he will he will judge with righteousness. Um, not by what his eyes or his ears can observe, but he, he's going to know human hearts, right? He's going to know their thoughts and et cetera, et cetera. And then you get to one of my favorite verses in verse six, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together and a little child shall lead them beautiful mm -hmm. and then what you have further in the tree of the nativity yeah. yeah exactly yeah hmm. and, and think we're back to non-violence again right because now mm -hmm. animals now are manifesting this peace so these carnivores are transformed into herbivores <laughs> yeah. and they're now friends and um, um, and I think that uh, that is a, that's a sign too of our our animalistic egos, right? Where we are tribal and we are specious <laughs> against not only our fellow human beings, but against even our own fellow creatures. <laughs> and um, and if you think about how how the depth of of reconciliation you're talking about here, we're not just talking about uh, human beings coming together. We're talking about the whole world coming together. Creation yeah. as it was planned. Yes. As it was in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I and I, you know, sometimes I I've been questioned about including a prayer about the environment, you know, in our prayers on Sundays. And my my answer to that is, this is what we're praying for. I mean, this is, we're stewards of God's creation. Right. And we're, we're praying for this, uh, the healing of this planet, you know. And so uh, it doesn't make us conservatives or liberals. It just, it just means that we're doing what God has entrusted us with. <laughs> Sorry, Janet? Asked us to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, starting with Adam naming the animals and mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we were supposedly the stewards. Oh, yeah. uh, that may have started out mm -hmm. fairly well, but yeah. got to the point where obviously we're not doing that good a job. Yeah. yeah. And, th and think this is God's vision. <laughs> this yeah. is a, and I think that sometimes we lose sight of what God's vision is for us, mm -hmm. for all creatures. Just remember a few weeks ago, we talked about hammering plowshares. I'm sorry, hammering weapons, weapons into plowshares and, uh, and re repurposing our, our violence now for cultivate cultivation. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you can call it what you want, but ultimately it's God's vision, and it's one of nonviolence. I think that that's that's the thing that I I I would like for us to to remember that 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 Jesus this is foreshadowing a time that that God's kingdom is going to come in in a way that's unexpected. I don't know. It's in the Old Testament somewhere, I'm pretty sure, but there's a passage about all creation groans for... Yes, Romans. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's in Romans. I apologize. It's in actually New Testament. I'm, yeah. I don't know exactly the location. I have trouble. Yeah, looking. all creation groans for redemption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even as our own spirit groans, right? So it's it's saying that we're groaning along, right, with prayers that are too deep for words, right? That's one of my favorite passages. Um, <clears throat> I 
Uh, you get, and then, you know, God, this is a radical piece, right? God is getting to the root of it when he talks about the jealousy, right? The competition between peoples and uh, the harassment. And, you know, a lot, a lot of war is, is about jealousy. It's about envy. You know, I, I want what they have, right? Or what you have is mine. And I'm just going to go take it. That's what, you know, Putin is doing to Ukraine. And, um, and I think that, um, again, God's going to take that away. He's going to, it's a radical transformation. I'm talking about root, the, the root, the stump of Jesse, the root of Jesse, again, you're leaning into the Messiah. And, you know, I, I don't know if God ever experiences, forgive me, frustration but you know a lot of times in the old testament you can see the israelites were adopting the customs of the people around them worshiping false uh, false gods yeah and you know he must be like you know okay so how many times i got to keep punishing you to stop doing this and they keep going back to it i guess there was some yeah. some drawer on on the part of these other communities yeah. around them that mm -hmm. just make them you know we don't want to do that let's do what they're doing and and god's like you're worshiping other gods i mean even to the fact of of sacrificing children to milcom and molech and i mean that yeah. was and god's like i never told you to do this i mean why why yeah. are you doing all this it's and mm -hmm. i don't know if there's a if god ever gets frustrated with us i mean but yeah I see that with maybe you know i'm not trying to offend him in any way but like you know like gave you all this and you just keep going in the opposite direction why do you keep yeah. going in the opposite direction and then you get punished by and then you know you come back eventually when you get punished enough you, you come back but then you still continue to drift yeah. off well I, I think about the scripture god is not slow in keeping his promises right, right. <laughs> and that he is patient it's not he's willing that everybody would come to repentance right and i think that um, and then when we think about something like frustration, that's a human emotion, right? right? And we're projecting that on God. And and I think I think we can understand some right. things in the the Bible that would express that. But but I think that uh, uh, and then I would say too that God is He disciplines He He doesn't punish, right? And so when a parent disciplines, they are shepherding their children right they're redirecting their children as opposed to being punitive right where um they 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 have to pay a certain price right or there's a certain judgment um there are consequences right right yeah and so um like punish is one i for me it's a, i wish it was a four lettered word because i i just don't think we should use that um as, especially as to, to God and then also to what we do as as parents or as a society we should always they should they should be correctional institutions not you know punitive because <laughs> we 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 believe in the in the redemption of the human soul right for anybody can turn and look at all the the people in the Bible that were, you know, reformed. Should we end on chapter 12? Because it's, it's, it's actually a Psalm. And I thought maybe we could just read it. We haven't been reading that much. Could somebody read chapter 12? It's only six verses. I would love to. Okay. Thank you, Janet. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away and you comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation and you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted, sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth, 
shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. And and notice how how ahead of its time it is. I mean, it's this is for all the earth. This is again. This is going mm -hmm. back to the promise to Abraham that all the families of the earth will be blessed through God's people. And um, it's it. Just, you, I almost have to pinch myself and just remind myself. I mean, this is this is globalism in, in the Old Testament, right? A global vision of, of reconciliation of people and knowing the Lord, right? Yeah. Uh, and so there's an evangelistic call here to to the people of Zion to be praising God and proclaiming him to all the nations. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well. It's twelve six is a key phrase according to my study Bible. Uh -huh. The first twelve chapters contain specific messages to Judah, but now Isaiah shifts his focus to surrounding nations. Mm -hmm. He ends the first section with a reference to the Holy One of Israel, a key phrase that hints at the special relationship between God and his covenant nation. Mm. The phrase appears only five times in the rest of the Old Testament, but 26 times in Isaiah. Mm. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on Sunday, we talked about the importance of art, of uh, artistic expression in in our faith and remember this is this is a a poem and it's also a song right so we're not just telling the nations we're singing a song in celebration mm -hmm. and there's nothing more contagious than that kind of joy right and yeah. uh, because when we sing if it's a if it's a catchy melody in a memorable poem, it invites people to join with us, right? Um, yeah. Because it becomes an anthem, right? Of, that we can all join in. Unfortunately, the world has a lot of its own anthems. Right, yeah. Think of the people nowadays on, you know, the Facebook and whatever, that they call influencers. Yeah. You know, suddenly all these people who have um, spotty resumes to, to <laughs> <laughs> question, you know, their expertise. Yeah. But telling people what to sing, what to wear, mm -hmm. where to go. And unfortunately, a lot of more important things. Yeah, yeah. To do for medicine, what to do for um, politics, what to do. And they're following them because yeah. they look good or they yeah. sound good or whatever. Yes. So we really have to raise our voices a little bit louder yeah and we're not raising our voices about ourselves but no right like, oh. i think that's the big difference mm -hmm. and we're not advocating just for our own tribe right not everyone for the whole world you mm -hmm. know <laughs> and that's what makes the i think the new testament and even isaiah so radical is that it's, it has this vision of a God who overcomes our differences and nonviolently. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And he when he does it by transforming our natures, just like a, a lamb, mm -hmm. uh, a wolf, you know, lying down with a lamb and a, and a, a lion with um, 
uh, well, a leopard with a young goat. With the kid, yeah. Yeah, the kid and the lion. Uh, the when, when I when we the read creatures this, nature is transformed. Yeah, go ahead. When we when I was reading this in my mind, I was picturing like, wouldn't it be great if all the different religions that conflict with each other, all the um people around the world, the different countries could have this one big field and just all lie down there together in yeah. peace. <laughs> That's how I was seeing it as peace. Mm -hmm. the same thing the bear and the i don't know yeah. whatever uh the leopard and and the and the lamb it it just that that came to mind wouldn't that be great yeah. if everyone in the world whether they were bears or tigers or lions Hello. or lambs can just get along together Hello. yeah oh my that might be a bad one right though <laughs> Yeah, so go ahead Andy. like uh the beginning of, of christianity they the jews didn't want it they wanted to be inclusive they didn't want to include the gentiles initially it's the same kind of theme over here mm -hmm. where they didn't want that but where jesus is saying or where isaiah is saying no it's all god saying it's all inclusive i want all the peoples to come to me not yeah. just yeah. the reformed jews who accepted christianity yeah yeah, and I think it's our animal nature, right, that wants to be nationalistic or um, uh, supremacist, you know, in our thoughts and our actions. That's that's our animal nature. But our but what God wants to do is for us to transcend that and to see the other not as other, but actually as we're one, right? We're we're one uh, with each other. Well, did Jesus say salvation is first for the Jew, but it's also for the Gentile? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's also in Romans uh, chapter one. Yeah. Uh, for the, yeah. And, um, but yeah, Jesus lived that. <laughs> he lived that. He was always on the margins. He was always on the borders of different nations. And he actually grew up on the margins there in, in Nazareth. It was a border town. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I think we made some good ground, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Mm -hmm. wow. So maybe next week, uh, 13, 14, and 15. And maybe even 16, because it kind of, I think we could um, cover, because it, it kind of goes over into that um is the pace we're doing this still working mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. and again if there's anything that you read beforehand that you have any questions about or want to highlight I, I welcome that so thank you i'll be on uh not able to come next week just an fyi okay i have to watch my grandkids who are off from school all week so well, that sounds like fun. It is fun. Running is fun. shoes, Mary Jean. What'd you say? Put on your running shoes. I know. I know. You tell them that Pastor Johnson says they, they need to lie down and piece together if they're... Okay. You know. <laughs> well, they're, they're seven and they, they're happy and then they hate each other. Yeah. And then they love each other and then they hate each other. Yeah. So. I remember those fun, times. <laughs> it is fun, though. That's sort of like Isaiah. Exactly. One, it's very, one time it's good <laughs> back and forth yes mm. us anyway. human beings <laughs> well should we close in prayer yes please gracious god we thank you for your word we thank you for this beautiful vision of what you want for us and what you want for the whole planet that you want us to be enjoying good stewardship of all your creation and peace between us. And we pray for that uh, to, to manifest in our lives and in our church, in our society, in our politics, and even in the global conflicts that we see, that you would be that prince of peace that would break through 
and uh, bring about reconciliation of all people as you want and as you promise. We pray all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye. Thank everyone. you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody.